politics. So, and, uh, but I, I, the, the, the interesting thing is that, like you and I, we have also discussed who are the, you know, who has the greatest voice within the media and within the entertainment industry. You and I touched on this briefly the last time. And we see it somehow that those people, the top tier within the media, they have a certain agenda that they are very, you know, very, very critical of the European. They try to right. enforce this white guilt. And it's it started like, for instance, with colonialism. Then it started with the German guilt after the Second World War. And now it has gone back again to the white guilt, encompassing all white countries, not only white Americans or Southerners, but also Swedes, Danes, Norwegians, Which, and Czech people from the Czech Republic. Yeah, all of us and, are, and, and, have collective guilt. Yes, and this is extremely dangerous. Yeah, and, 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 and I find that to be very ridiculous because we also spoke uh, prior to the recording about how uh, you know, these, especially Northern Europe and Eastern Europe, I try to tell, not only do I tell people on my YouTube videos, I don't do it often, but I have mentioned it in the past. You can't blame all Europeans for slavery because, um, you, I, you actually had most of, uh, the continent really not participate. Like, I don't know of any Eastern European countries or Baltic states that, um, and even Germany for that matter, they weren't involved, um, I don't think. In the uh, the shipment of slaves uh, as a as a as a governmental policy, it may have been some bankers because you know the Rothschilds are from Frankfurt, so obviously there could have been bankers from any any of anywhere that probably sponsored some of the ships or insured them. But um, not all Europeans should feel any sort of uh, guilt about, and especially in the case of Northern Europe and Eastern Europe, for the most part, I don't think uh, Northern Europeans. Or uh, even people from the Baltic, Balkans, they didn't go on any imperial adventures. Like, I don't recall the Hungarians uh, colonizing uh, Central America. So if you're a white European from uh, Hungary, um, I don't know how they can play the white guilt on, on the those who didn't participate at all. And and the same thing for the, 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 the Germans. The Germans have done... Uh, so much, uh, especially after World War II, that's actually been positive for the world, and they've uh, tried to, uh, you know, divorce themselves from that. Um, I mean, even now, you can't even uh, try, like, you have these uh, revisionist um, historians that get arrested. You don't have total free speech in Germany. So I think Germany is, is paying, and they actually pay reparations, uh, t I think, to this day to, to Jewish people. So uh, the the guilt factor has to go, but what people should strive to do is just learn from the history. Let's not repeat those mistakes. Let's not uh, colonize. Exactly. You know, and, and it should stop there. People shouldn't feel guilty about uh, activities they didn't participate in, uh, I don't think. But, uh, okay, but, you know, Mark, what is interesting here, like, for instance, if you see, like, I would say that the powerful elements within the academic left in the United States are, are very strongly rooted in the Frankfurt School. And, uh, and these are, you have very prominent Jewish members like, for instance, Herbert Marcuse, uh, Theodor Adorno, you know, Horkheimer. And, and, and this, let's say, branch of cultural, what is referred to in popular term, cultural Marxism, it reached very strong significance within the academic institution and also within the media. And you have, for instance, within this cultural Marxism, you have post-colonial theories, theories of cultural imperialism, uh, let's say, and also a one-dimensional view that, that everything what happened, that the West was the most atrocious civilization ever. So they have... They have let's say, they have only, let's say, analyzed the atrocious elements from a Western point of view by totally leaving out what other civilizations have done. You mentioned, for instance, the Balkan region. Well, obviously, the Balkan region was subjected to the Ottoman imperialism over right. 500 years. 
So, and, 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 and they and, definitely but, committed atrocities. Um, one of the um, and, and, uh, hopefully uh, people buy it this time, but one of the things that I wrote about that I was trying to sell was the uh, Ottomans, uh, some of their atrocities, along with, uh, like you said, not only the Ottomans, but the Arab world actually committed atrocities against uh, Africans as well. So you're, you're absolutely right. They totally highlight um, the, um, I guess you could say, war yeah. crimes or atrocities from the European perspective, but they leave out everyone else. And they especially leave out, because um, a lot of members of the tribe, or the, the Hebiru, as I like to call them, because uh, the ancient uh, Egyptians referred to the uh, Hebrew-speaking people as uh, Hebiru, and from what I read, it meant thieves. So <laughs> I think it's appropriate, but what they did, what they, and what they continue to do is they always highlight um, what other people are doing and they totally ignore um, their hand in it because in many of the cases where you did have um, Europeans committing atrocities oh, and others, you will you pull back the curtain and you'll see that uh, they were involved in many of the cases. <laughs> of course. I mean, there are many, yes, and also, but you look at other civilizations too. You had, for instance, the Mongol expansion. Yeah. You had for... If you look at it, I mean, history will give you, like you mentioned, the more expansion, the Arab expansion is. Right. And then you go to Mesoamerica, the Aztecs were actually very ruthless yeah, yeah. towards um, the other um, First Nations here in the Western Hemisphere. You know, they wreaked havoc yeah. in Central America. Yes. And also the Japanese atrocities against the Chinese during the Second World War also. It's totally left out the concentration camps that the Japanese had, but all of a sudden there is no, you know, push for Japan to become a multiracial society and take in all those migrants. Right, right. But, you know, interestingly, I think uh, they, there are people advocating for that. Um, you know, there is an element in Japan that's trying to say, hey, look, we need more, um, our population is aging. We, we at least need to take in, um, you know, people from the Philippines, like nurses. But um, I hope the Japanese people are smart enough not yeah. to fall for that sort of, um, you know, there's just, uh, it, it's not, <laughs> it, it isn't called balkanization for, for no reason. You know, like, um, if you know, multi-ethnic regions, is, usually it's not a good thing. You know, it's <laughs> a lot of turmoil, so... And and, and I, ship, I, I think they're doing it. A quick note: they're they're really trying to undermine Sweden, Norway, and um, Iceland, and some of especially Germany. the Nordic countries because the Germany they're a good example, and, and they don't that they, they don't want the world to follow because you have societies where there's wealth and affluence, but the uh, working class still have a fair deal in life, and there's not a lot of um, I guess you could say class turmoil and a disadvantage, especially, again, to the working class. So the, the, the United States does not um, like that sort of thing. So our country is, is going to play a, a big role in um, trying to, you know, undermine. Cause, I mean, we have to face it. Um, we, we go right along uh, with Israel on a lot of these bad policies. But um, what were you, you were going to try to shift gears? I'm sorry. No, 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 it's good. I thought that this was a perfect, you know, shift towards the Balkan. We can adjust when you mentioned Balkanization. So it's, it's, I, I'm thinking we can talk a little bit about Yugoslavia and the creation of modern Greece. I mean, we wanted to tie this in too. Yes, yes, because, um, yeah, and I remember I said, um, I, I, I remember reading um, that the English, and that's one of the charges that I assert on my channel, uh, a lot is um in addition to the tribe and the you know, the uh the zionist I, I tend to put a lot of the blame for the turmoil we see in the world uh, on the anglophone world because um especially with world war 1 I, I think had they let the chips fall as as they would have the world would be in a lot better shape you would have had a um you know if the german empire didn't fall you would have had a bulwark against uh, bolshevism there would have been no um, Israeli-Palestine conflict because, you know, the Ottoman Empire would have remained uh, mostly in Asia, by the way. I think they were mostly... You really, you, really th you really think that the Ottoman Empire would have remained intact? I believe that the Ottoman Empire was crumbling already you know, during the 18th century. I, I, they, so? they, they were, but um, with the help of the Germans, they were consolidating what they had left. I think most... 
mostly what they had left was the Anatolian Peninsula, um, the Levant, and they had the railway that connected the Hejaz all the way to, they were trying to build a Berlin to uh, Baghdad railway. They, they, I think they would have been able to keep control. I mean, even today, um, if Turkey wanted to, Turkey's already asserted dominance over northern Iraq, the Kurdish region. So it, it's not a stretch for me to think that the Turks could have maintained control of um, the, you know, that Tigris Euphrates region as well as the Levant. And um, uh, if the British didn't intervene, they definitely would have kept control of the Hejaz uh, region of the Arabian Peninsula. Maybe the Saudi Arabians would have conquered the the interior and the eastern portion, but I don't. I think the the uh, the, the Ottomans would have remained in those areas. They would have never been what they were. They wouldn't have, you know, taken over Egypt again or North Africa or really gone back into Central Europe. But they would have at least been uh, intact in uh, the, that peninsula. Uh, that's just how I feel about it. I could, you know, because if you look at, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Because if you look at, you already have strong independence. Let's say. Uh, Greece was trying for an independence already during the 1830s, and they they had it was a London conference at that era, and you also had during 1912 and 1913 uh, the Balkan Wars, leading to also a substantial loss for the for the Ottoman the Ottoman Empire as well, uh, especially in in the Balkan region, in in for instance Bulgaria. In, in Greece and so yes, on. So we yes. have very strong nation, nationalistic sentiments going against this Ottoman uh, rule, I would say. But I also agree with you how it was managed by the great powers. It simply, during the First World War, led to the end of the Ottoman Empire, obviously, because it was a new chapter and it was they moved on to, to a path of secularization and with substantial loss of territories. That's 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 very true. And now that you mention it, I may have to revise uh, because you also had that Kurdish element also, and they had to massacre a lot of Armenians to keep control of uh, that that region of the peninsula. So yeah, perhaps uh, I had to reassess that they maybe they would have existed. The young, the young Turks and the massacre committed against their Armenians. I believe it was in 1915. So you had, and you, you, prior to this, you have the Balkan Wars with the Serbs resisting the Bulgarians. So, so you had lots of turmoil, I would say. But, but definitely, how it was managed by the great powers. Look, the great powers, obviously, I agree, they wanted to create this modern Greece. It was over 500 years under Ottoman rule. The, the, the Byzantine Empire was lost with Constantinople. So obviously you see that they wanted to to just um, end the Ottoman rule, I would say. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think from what I read uh, briefly, I have a book called uh, The Balkans, Nationalism, War, and the Great Powers, 1804 mm-hmm. to 2011 by Misha Glenny. Glenn, I don't know, um, you know what ethnicity this individual is, but... Um, I, I, I try to not buy things.